This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined once again by a highly esteemed trainer, Peter Fury. Peter, how are you? I'm uh, good, uh, Danny. Are you? I'm very good. I'm, I'm really looking forward to Christmas, actually. So, yeah, I'm yeah, in the spirit. It's a, nice, it's a nice time of the year. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Good, good to stuff. relax and do nothing. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, I want to talk to you about your fighters, of course, um, Huey Fury and Savannah Marshall. Starting with Huey, a lot going on in the heavyweight division at the moment. Where, where does he kind of fit in and when will we next see him out? Uh, he's on the 12th of February. Um, so we're looking forward to that. It'll be up in Newcastle again, I think. So yeah, he's, uh, he's training. So uh, yeah, looking forward to getting him out again uh, on the 12th of February. So we're all, he's more or less training every day. So just waiting to get a good uh, level of opponent and away we go again. In terms of getting to another world title shot, we've obviously got uh, Tyson defending against Dillian White now, it seems. Anthony Joshua going back in to regain the belts, in the, he hopes, against Usyk. How does that sort of stuff at the top end affect Huey in terms of how long he might have to wait? Um, it doesn't matter because after this next fight in February, then, you know, he wants all the top names, so whether they've got a strap or not is irrelevant. So he's going to be he's going to be fighting. So uh, you know, look, people don't need to see who's got a belt around them to see who the best fighter is. So if he's beating that, if he's beating people in the top ten, beating them in style, then that's what counts. So you you is coming for uh, for anybody really. So it doesn't matter who's who's what. He's not cherry picking anybody. So uh, like I said, we'll get February out of the way. Um, get another opponent and you know that's it so after then he should be you know looking at big fights for you is there anyone in that top 10 that you guys particularly fancy I, I don't want to um, call out anybody if, you know because they might have other fights pending or whatever it's not the way we do things but he, he's ready he's silently coming and uh, he's very interesting so we're looking to get big fights for him whoever, whoever it may be how much of a bonus is it in terms of making those big fights that Huey's now back on Sky Sports, got the, the kind of machine behind him? Well, I think it's great because obviously they've got the finances and resources to make these type of fights. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it can be made. And I believe Sky Sports will make them fights because they're the fights that uh, ultimately, you know, they've come back into the game as well. So they want to prove themselves. So they want to be putting good fights on. So, you know, um, so Yui couldn't be in a better position at the moment so to, to enable to get these fights going. So, like I said, uh, next year should be a big year for Yui. And another high-profile Sky Sports signing was, of course, Savannah Marshall. Um, she wasn't able to go out last time because of an injury. J just tell us how she's getting on. Yeah, she had an injury on the middle knuckle. Um, she went up to Sheffield somewhere to have some therapy on it. Thankfully, nothing was fractured or broke. I think just like tendon issue, <coughs> which a lot of punches get. So it, it is one of them, you know. So, you know, in future when she's doing the pads and in, in the uh, gym, well, she uses bigger gloves anyway. You know, so uh, it's, just, it's just unfortunate because the type of fight that she brought in the last fight, she come forward, which mm. made the, even the impact even more worse. So hence uh, why she got uh, the hand problem. But I think, uh, no, she's fine. She's in the gym as well. And uh, she's also, uh, she'll be probably headlining again on uh, February the 12th in Newcastle. Kind of hand problems, knuckle issues. Is that an unavoidable consequence of being a big puncher? I think so, yeah. You know, in, uh, because she had no problems going into the fight. You know, but uh, when she come out, you know, she, she said straight away, she said, oh, you know, you know, my hand's not good. But it was only the, the middle knuckle. It was no part of the it was no part of the rest of it. So these things happen. I think it was uh, more or less bad, bru bad bruising and may maybe the tendons injured a little bit. But you know she's had some therapy on it and she's she's back to normal. Is uh, Clarissa Shields uh, Savannah's longtime rival? Is she going to be on that February the twelfth card? As far as you're aware, 
Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure, but we would hope so. Um, because I know she was due to fight in December or I'm reading all different reports. I don't really get that much into uh, what's going on behind the scenes, but you know, I'm more or less concentrated on my own fighters. But, you know, she should be. And um, then after that, it's the, it's the big one. So, you know, these are, they're on a collision course and it's got to happen next year. So I'm hoping that she is on the February 12th with Savannah and uh, that's it. And it's all systems go for the big one. Now, I did want to ask you about something outside of your stable, and that's the uh, future or immediate future for Anthony Joshua. Before I talk to you about the training situation, what yeah. chance do you give Joshua in the rematch with Usyk? I give every heavyweight every chance uh, because, you know, he's, let's not forget, you know, people will easily pull Joshua apart. You know, he lost this, he lost that. When you're fighting, um, you know, High, high, you know, one of the best, one of the best fighters in the world in music, which I've always said he is. You know, forget what other people say. He's small. He's this. He's that. He's not any of that. You know, it's not changed. If you look what I said before the fight, you know, I've always highly regarded Usyk because three hundred and something amateur fights. You know, Olympic gold medalist, cruiserweight unified champion. Jumped up to heavyweight, you know, he's a serious boxer, serious fighter. And, you know, the thing is as well, Tony, he's got a good chin. So it makes it even more harder because this is a guy that can genuinely fight. So, you know, he's right at the top of the tree. So, like I said, you know, Joshua, he just came up short. But, you know, with the right kind of tactics next time, he can come back. He knows what he's up against next time. And, you know, I'm sure he'll make a better fight of it. But, I, but also Usyk will make a better fight of it next time because they both know each other. They know what they need to work on. So it's going to be one of them. Can he win it? Of course he can win the rematch. He is naturally bigger. Mm. So it just depends how he uses it. Um, he's not, look, you're not going to walk into Usyk and think you're going to bowl him over because you're a bigger guy. Because, look, you, when you walk into punches, they're twice as hard. And southpaws, They've got tremendous backhands as well. They can hit, especially when you're walking onto them. So, you know, it's a tall order, you know. If, if we could walk through fighters like it was easy, then everybody would be doing it. But I just don't see that with Usyk because he's got the movement. He has got power in his hands. And he's a very accurate puncher. So it's, uh, but yeah, look, it'll be a good fight. They'll have adjusted and, uh, yeah, but it's not an easy task. It's another difficult night's work. For sure, it's not like Joshua is going to come back and you know wipe the floor with his part. That's not going to happen. You know, he could very easily lose again, as ver as he as he could win it. So it just depends, you know, what what his uh, game plans are and and everything else going into it. His mental state, you know, all of these things play a factor, don't they? What do you make of Joshua going around the US, uh, visiting different gyms, talking to different trainers? Well, uh, what he's got to watch, he ain't, he's got to watch he doesn't fall into the same trap as Klitschko, a perfectionist, mm. because that's what that's what undone Klitschko. Because when I seen him in the press conference years ago, he had themes in his trousers. You know, he, this guy was immaculate, spoke 20 languages, you know, a perfectionist. But what does a perfectionist do? You know, he ended up getting totally outboxed mm. because he, uh, a perfectionist, wants to do everything perfect. You know, I listen to... Uh, he done an interview and he said, oh, you know, this trainer, you know, he was led by such and such a body. You know, he's going back 200 years as a trainer. You know, it's, it's just overkill. You know what it is? I think you can overthink this job. And um, ultimately, you can have the best trainers in the world. They're there to guide you. But it's what's in your DNA at the end of the day. When you're in there and that man's as good as you, then listen, you got to bite them on that gum shell gum shield and it's who's got the most bollocks at the end of the day excuse my French because listen it's a fight so get stuck in and rip in big heavyweight can it like a hammer yeah get them chops on so he's got to be careful of being too much of a perfectionist <laughs> he's not he's complete undoing you know he's got to basically in my language get in there don't give a fuck and have a fight mate my boxing ain't working you know nail me out to the canvas 
You know, get in there, have a fight, go out on your back, forget points. I'd, I, I'd rather get KO'd flat out than lose on points. That's the way you've got to look at it. Builds with that attitude, he'll do well. And that, 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 that what I'm telling him to do there through yourself is better than any trainer on the planet can give him because that's it. You can work on all the technique you want. What it comes down to is that the right, the right game plans, being prepared if all else fails to do what you need to do. Now, I have to ask before we round off this subject, if he came to you, gave you a call, visited you and said, <coughs> Peter, I need your help. I don't know how to win this rematch. Will you train me for it? Would you be at all open to it or are you too busy with what you've got? I'm not interested because I'm not a prostitute. I'm not a fame seeker. Yeah. I don't need money from boxing. Yeah. So I'm not a hooker that's dying for a payday. I'm happy to do anything. I'm talking to you straight now. I don't give a fuck who you are. Yeah. I've got my own son and I'm guiding him to where he needs to be. That's it. I'm not interested. And I've got a couple in the gym because I want to help them because that's what I want to do. I want to do that for them and get them on the right track. But I just concentrate on my own son. I got Savannah. And when, when, they're, when they're done, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say, right, we've achieved what we've done. That's it. And uh, I'm interested in getting my own son to where I'm going to get him to. I'm not interested in anybody else. Great stuff. Peter, really appreciate that. And um, have a great Christmas. Same to you, Danny. God bless you and all your family. And uh, wish everybody a wonderful Christmas.